you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. Welcome to the demonstration series for the Smart Zone controller based on a high scale deployment of the 5.2 Smart Zone release. The videos in this series will show you the basic configuration of many aspects of the controller. In this video, we will associate WLAN groups to AP groups and show the effects of these associations. Let's get started. In a previous video, we created a few wireless LAN groups and we created a few wireless LANs and associated them to the specific wireless LAN group. Uh, the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to associate um, the access point groups to these wireless LAN groups and observe what happens when we do that. So we're going to go over to access points. We're going to open up the demo domain one, demo zone one. And you can see that we have two access point groups here. We have AP group two, uh, which has only a single access point in it, a Ruckus R510. And we have the default access point group for this zone, which also only has a single access point, a Ruckus R310. So if we select the Ruckus R310 here in the default access point group, uh, we can see that it currently is not propagating any WLAN. So we're gonna scroll down here and we can see that this, this is currently blank. This is because um, in the previous video, we removed all of the WLANs from the default um, group, and that is what is kind of specified here for the default access point group. Uh, we're gonna modify that. We want the corporate uh, WLAN to be um, broadcast in, in, to any of the APs in the default access point group. So we're gonna select that uh, and we're gonna choose edit so when we do this, we are able to override the settings that were defined at the zone level. So we're going to um, specifically override the WLAN group. So we're going to turn this on for both radios. So it is radio independent. And we're just going to validate um, that the corporate uh, WLAN group is what is selected here. So you can see in the drop down list, we have all three WLAN groups for this zone, corp, default, and guest. But we are only specifying corp here. So Make sure that the selection for the WLAN group that you want is, is, is applied and choose OK. It does take a moment for that configuration change to push out to the AP um, so that it knows the configuration has been updated. But uh, just to confirm that it has pushed, we can select that particular AP here. Uh, and then we can scroll down under the general tab and we can see that it is indeed um, broadcasting the corporate uh, WLAN that we created and associated to the corp uh, WLAN group. So it has, um, it, and it is broadcasting that for both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. So we're going to go back into the AP group two, and we're going to edit that AP group so that um, it can be a part of the guest WLAN group. So again, when you create an AP group, um, it is inheriting the configuration of the zone and we are overriding those configurations when we create the AP group. So again, we've got some things that have already been overridden here and we're just going to also override the WLAN group. So for both uh, 2.4 and 5 again, we are going to select guest. So we've done that. So those are the changes that we want to make and we're going to choose OK. This configuration change will take, again, some time to apply. So once it is complete, we can double check and make sure that it is propagating the WLANs that we expect it to. We'll select the R510 in this case, and we will scroll down and we will look at uh, the WLANs. And we see that it is indeed uh, propagating the guest WLAN on both the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz uh, range. So, so that's exactly what we expect. We can additionally see um, if we select the AP group itself, and we look at the configuration of the AP group um, that we are uh, indeed overriding the WLAN group. So there are several ways we can kind of verify and validate um, the data that we need to make sure is being applied to these access point groups. At this point, access points that are added to AP group two would propagate the guest WLAN, while access points that were added to the default access point group would uh, propagate the corp WLAN that we created, but uh, both of these can still be overridden. So we made these changes at the access point group level, but 
they could be further overridden at the individual AP level. So if we wanted to, and we've only got one access point here, so it might not make a lot of sense to do it, but I want to at least show you that you can do it. Um, you can select the specific AP and we can configure that. So we've selected the R510 and AP group two. So we're going to click configure here and we can go in and override further the WLAN group. So we can see um, that right now it is guest for both radios and we could change that. So if we wanted this to be uh, corp for some reason or we created another WLAN that we wanted this to broadcast, we could move it to that or potentially, you know, there's a, a, a yet another um, guest network that's in a different group. We could combine those and they could be in a different uh, WLAN group altogether. Additionally, you can actually disable um, the WLAN service on an individual AP level. So we can see that the context is editing just this AP. We could turn the WLAN service off. We can change the groups. We can do a lot of stuff at just the AP level. I'm not going to make any of those changes, so I'm going to go ahead and click cancel here. So to summarize what we've talked about in this video, WLANs are associated to WLAN groups. Uh, those WLAN groups can be applied to one or more AP groups. And then alternately, uh, those WLAN groups can be applied to individual APs. So it really gives you control over which WLANs are propagated onto which APs. Thank you for taking the time to view this brief demonstration. We hope you can view additional videos in our SmartZone 5.2 series. Mm -hmm.